Hello again folks. Today I'm going to have a little chat about the Diamond Heavy Duty Fret Saw. Now I have mentioned this before in my videos about scroll saws and fret saws, but one subscriber pointed out that I've never actually shown it working, which is probably true, and I'm going to try and address that now and explain a few features about the saw and show it actually being used in work. I'll show you some of the advantages of this particular saw and I'll show you some of the disadvantages. This is the first power fret saw I actually bought. Previous to this machine I always used the Hobbies treadle machine or hand frame as you've seen in my, some of my other videos about the A1 fretwork machine. I bought this one from a company called JD Woodward of Hinkley. All the parts are British made, every single part of it apparently. It is a really good, well-made machine. It does have one or two drawbacks over my Hegner machine that you've seen videos of, and I will try and point those out a bit later on. But to start with, I'll just explain a few of the features of this particular saw. Uh, before we go on, these are no longer made. Sadly, Mr. Woodward, who, who built this machine, died, and uh, obviously the, they ceased production which was a great shame because he was working on some new features which would have made this a much better machine than, than this particular one here. Anyway, first of all you'll notice it does have a large wooden table. To measure that, the table itself is, is almost 2 foot 24 inches by 16 inches which is quite large. The saw is driven by a, a, a small series wound carbon brush motor. This was made by a firm called Carter. We used to call them Carter Romford Motors. They actually used them in spin dryers at the time. The advantage of this type of motor is speed can be controlled very easily with the addition of an electronic speed control. The only disadvantage is it's carbon brushes which do tend to wear out eventually, although these are the original ones, and also they can be very noisy. This little device here is electrically powered. It's a little blurry, and when you power up the saw, this turns on, it's very quiet running, and it, it blows through along through this little tube, through the frame, and there's a little blur on the front, which this little nozzle here, when I turn the saw on, you've got a, a jet of air, which keeps the cutting line free of dust. There's a thread in the end of this shaft, and they did supply a flexible drive, which you could screw into there, and then use it with a little drill or a sanding attachment, which was quite useful. And also, you'll see down here is the switch control with variable speed. The saw, by the way, was guaranteed for five years, which is quite a long time for, for a machine of this sort. Underneath the front of the table, you can see the lower blade clamp with a wing nut. Normally, you leave that alone. This little adjusting nut here, you loosen that, and, and you'll see there's a slotted plate here which means you can adjust the table up to 45 degrees which will allow you to do bevel cutting or mitre cutting on the saw itself. On the top of the saw you'll notice here you've got the the standard screw for tightening the blade in the holder and this little knob on the top is a tension uh, adjusting nut. You've also got one on the back but generally you leave the back one alone. There's a nut underneath so you can adjust this quite a long way for different size blades. Now the thing about this particular saw, it has got some unique features. The blade holders I've got in the saw at the moment are for, especially for fretwork blades like these here and all they've got is a tapered hole in here so that you can insert the blade easily without even looking at it. These are the standard blade holders that come with the diamond saw when I bought it originally. They're universal, they'll take any type of blade. Basically, you can use a normal fret saw blade like this with them, or you could even use um, a hacksaw, metal hacksaw blade because it's got the hook on there so you can use the pin and hook method to hold it in. Uh, you can use a 10 inch hacksaw blade by adjusting the thread on them and making them larger the distance between the two blade holders larger even if you want to you could use a piece of broken band saw blade in these uh, although I'm a bit dubious about that I think they were quite dangerous actually with that sharp blade whizzing around but that's the principle you can use any sort of blade with it the ones I've got in the saw itself these here are actual fret saw blade holders and they've just got a hole, a countersink hole in it where it's very easy to put the blade in. So I don't normally use these. Right, now I'm going to discuss changing the blade on the diamond saw and this is where there is a problem. Now for normal use it's fine, it's not a problem if you're just using it to cut shapes and things out. We'll come to that in a moment. 
First of all, I'm going to change the blade. I've got a new blade here. This is a number 11 fret saw blade. So the first thing to do is just to hold that firmly and loosen this nut off to release the tension. Undo this nut on the top, put your hand underneath and undo the one on the bottom. You can then pull the blade out. I'm not even looking underneath, you notice. Get your blade. Now all you need to do is poke it down through the hole, find the hole in the blade holder and poke the saw blade into the hole. Make sure it's gone in past the tightening up nut and lever. Tighten it up underneath, make sure it's quite tight and pop it in the blade holder at the top. Tighten that one up, make sure it's tight and then do the tensioning nut up until it gets to the right tension. You can tell by pinging the blade, see that isn't tight enough. That isn't a nice sharp ping so you get used to it after a time. No, get the right pitch. Get in there. Oh, that's nice. See? That's, a, that, that's about right. You can tell how tight the blade's meant to be by the ping, if it's got a nice ping. And make sure it's um, in line with the saw, like so, and that should be it. In a moment, I will cut some wood to show it working. I really will. So I promise I will do that in a minute. But... Before I do that, this is a problem. This is the drawback that I was pointing out with this particular saw. Notice how long it took me to change that blade. Now, if you're, generally speaking, those blades will last quite a long time unless you're doing a lot of cutting in hardwood and a lot of it. But for general woodwork, I can keep a blade in there for ages and ages. Now, if you're cutting out a design like, say, for example, like something like this, up top of a cupboard or a fitting or something like that, it's not a problem. You can do all that job done, easy as anything. That's straightforward. If you're doing a shape like this, just a simple sh shape, that's a, a, a back of a, a, a little plaque I made, that's easy because you don't have, you, the, you use the blade as it is. You don't need to take the blade out for that. When you start getting onto things that are more involved, for example, this cat shape, that's fairly easy. There's one, two, three cutouts in that, so that means three times you've got to change the blade over like that. That's not too bad. And when you get something like that, which is a lot, lot more complex, and you can imagine how many times you've got to put the blade in and out to do that, you'll start to see the problem. Now, first time you change that blade, it's quite fairly easy, and you think, well, this is okay. But when you're on about the 30th time, this knurled nut starts to hurt your fingers, especially if you're an old boy like me, and everything's sort of wearing out. And you'll notice it's blooming hard work keep doing that. It really is. Now that, that even that isn't too bad, but I've got some in the house I've done which have 140 separate blade changes. That's where you drill a hole through, put the blade through, and you have to do this 140 times. Now, that would drive me mad on this saw. It's a lovely saw, don't get me wrong. It is really good saw, and you can do intricate work on it. It's just that it's hard work changing that blade. I actually spoke to Doug Woodward about this problem. And I mentioned the fact that my Hobbies machine had a, a cam device. This is a Hobbies hand fret saw and, and they made these from, from around 1900. And when you do the tension on this, it's brilliant. It's just got a little cam on there. What could be simpler? You put the blade in, fairly reasonable, click that round and there's the tension done. See, there's the ping again. What a difference that would make if you could devise something like that for the saw. And he replied to me that he was working on it, which, which I thought is brilliant because it will make this saw so much more useful. But unfortunately, before he could finish it, he passed away, sadly. It's a great shame, apart from the fact it was sadly passed away and he didn't develop the saw anymore from the, the saw died basically then. Uh, I didn't get the cam for that, which is a bit disappointing. I'm now going to show you what the reason why this is more difficult compared to my Hegner machine. Now I know this video is meant to be about the diamond fret saw, but forgive me, I'm going to have to show you my Hegner fret saw just to show you the difference in blade changing and the problem with the diamond. You saw the problem with changing the blade on the diamond, which isn't a problem generally, only if you're doing a lot of pierced cuts or internal cuts. I've just got a piece of wood here with a hole in just to indicate I was cutting something out with lots of internal cuts and I'll show you how, how quickly you can change the blade and poke it through. Right, first thing to do with the Hegner, I'm, I don't even need to look at it. Put that lever forward, that, that removes the tension. Undo that little thing there. Poke the blade through the hole, like so. Click it back in, tighten the lever up, 
do the tension and away you go, do your internal cut. There you go. Piece of cake, undo the lever, do the blade. Now you can imagine if you're doing a hundred internal cuts where you've drilled holes and you've got to keep poking the blade through to do internal cuts. Imagine how much easier it is on this saw than it is on the diamond saw when you undo that knurled nut at the top which drives you mad, it hurts your hands. So that is a major drawback which has been solved on this saw brilliantly and it does make an awful difference I can tell you. Anyway that's enough of that because I want to talk about the diamond saw and I'm going to show it working now. Well that's all for part one. In part two I'll show the machine working and I'll discuss some of the further features of the saw. See you in part two.